Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Field Trips. Super exciting. We are back at the Keystone Cougar, my home on wheels. Back to touring the United States, trying to catch fish in all 50 of them. The next stretch that we're doing is a stretch I don't know too much about, but as I've learned in the past, there are plenty of hidden gems in this great country of ours. We are heading up, starting with Kansas. This episode, we're going to be going for a pretty cool game fish, and we're going to be cooking it up. Really excited about this first one. Then we're heading up to Nebraska, and after that, South Dakota, the Black Hills, where Mount Rushmore is. We're going to be spending the most time up there. we got a variety of fish we're going to be targeting up in the Black Hills. Never fished in these states, never really spent any time in them. I've never been to South Dakota at all. It's going to be a good time, but we're starting off here in Kansas. We're meeting up with a guy named Christian Shuck in the morning. We'll tell you all about what we're about to be doing. It's going to be a good time. Stick around. We'll see you on the lake. Good luck when I was catfishing <laughs> a lot. We got a far run. Well, first off, it'll only be about half a mile. We're going to see if they're schooled up there. I basically have spent a week in a gravel parking lot in the middle of nowhere, Kansas. So, but I think it's going to all be worth it because it's shaping up to be pretty, pretty perfect conditions. And here we are. no rhyme or reason of what they're doing each day. They're just in a little bit different spot. So there's that on big flats and you're cruising around just looking for them on your electronics? So main lake points, any little finger that sticks off of it, like this little bit, has been attracting them this time of year. Gotcha. So these fish, I think of them as like kind of this pelagic, like... Yeah, here they are. That's fish? Yeah. Those white marks with the shadows to the side of them. Right are the ones that we're looking for. So we've got some fish scattered out. We don't have any sizable groups on this point. This point's held the bigger fish lately. Yeah. All right, guys, well, good morning. We have made it out here to Cheney Reservoir with Christian Shuck. I've never met this guy, but he's, I've been talking to him all week. We've been planning this. We've been dealing with Kansas weather, a lot of wind, some storms. But today, I mean, look at this glassed out. So we're gonna be fishing today for wipers, or as I know them in Texas, we call them hybrids. These are one of the hardest fighting fish in freshwater, pound for pound, I would say. And we're gonna talk a little bit about why these fish are here. We're gonna talk a little bit about an invasive species that's helping make this fishery what it is. But first things first, we're gonna to get to fishing. We're gonna do some casts. So, got to the first spot. Let's do it. All right. Just getting a lucky volunteer to see if they're going to eat something else. So what is that? This is a goldfish. Very natural prey item. Yeah, very, very natural <laughs> here for the wiper. <laughs> it is wiper candy some days, though. You're just dropping that below the boat, huh? So they're cruising around, and I can see them swimming below the boat. Drop it to the bottom, bring it up about... Eight inches to a foot. And we'll know, I'm guessing, if it gets hit, huh? <laughs> All right, so we're seeing walls of wipers, as Christian here is saying. Basically all around the boat. They're cruising around, but we're, we're chunking these crankbaits, bringing them back all around us. He's looking at the school actively on his graph, and we're casting towards where the fish are. And they're not biting, so I don't know, maybe they're just still waking up this morning, just not in the mood to feed right now, but uh, to up our chances and kind of see, Christian just put down a live goldfish. He's gonna let that hang out right below the boat while we keep casting these crankbaits, and I'd rather catch them on artificial, but some days the fish just don't want anything to do with it. And so if they start hitting the live bait and just will not hit the cranks, at least this morning, we may end up doubling up doing that. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh, yep, yep. <laughs> fish on the goldfish, you guys. Dude, it's pulling some strength. <laughs> you can give him a couple clicks, maybe. 
Man, you saw that. He was like playing with it for a second there, huh? He thumped it and then he went on. You probably have to go up front and chase him. Yeah. All right, guys, first fish on. <laughs> Got this on a pretty light spinning setup. They have not been willing to hit the, the deep diving cranks yet, but that goldfish has been out maybe about 10 minutes. And Christian saw the hit, and then uh, sure enough, it came back for it. Man, just... You might be able to give him a few more sticks. All of them. Maybe not. He might be good. Yeah, I think it's... It feels like a pretty decent fish. I mean, I know these things fight hard for their size, so... It's been a long time since I caught one. He's up top. I'll get a look at him here in a second. But I know it can be misleading, the fight here. He may not be that big. He looks decent. Keep him out of the trolling motor. Ooh. Man, that's a decent fish, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. Dude, that's a great fish, man. It's <laughs> in that 22, maybe 23 inch range. Man, I'll take that kind of start all day, right in the top of the jaw. Did not take long at all. Man, Christian, my man, thank you. So this, you guys, is a wiper. They call them wiper because this is half white bass mixed with striper. You can tell it's not a striper because of this. These, these horizontal lines on their body, they're broken up. Whereas on a striper, they're gonna be a lot more uniform, a lot straighter. And that's kind of the telltale sign. I think also they got a tooth patch, right? That's also part of it on the yeah, tongue. So, so there's a twin tooth patch. On the tongue, yeah. Yep. So the tooth patch, if there's two of them, it's a wiper or a striper. If there's one big tooth patch, it's a white bass. Gotcha. And look at that, great fish. These things are so strong. I mean, if you've ever caught striper, you know how hard those fish fight, how hard fish that are kind of shaped this way fight. But to me, in my experience, I always said that these things fight harder pound for pound than white bass or striper. They got mixed together, and to me, they yielded a stronger fish. Now, they don't get as big as striper. Obviously, they get bigger than white bass. But, dude, that was a blast. And they're always angry. On that light spinning setup, that was a, that was, that was a good time. That's a fight there. And how, no, we can keep these, right? Yeah. How many? Two per person. Two per person. They have to be over 21 inches. Over 21 inches. You think he'll go? Yeah, he should. I'll throw them on the board. Yeah, let's check them. Sweet, man. First fish, done. 23. 23 inches. You want him? Yeah, yeah. That's Ooh. dinner. I don't know if you can do this on YouTube or not. So I cut them and they taste yeah, bleed Twice them out. Good. Bleed them out. Um, I bleed them out there for 15 minutes or more, and then I throw them on ice right away. Gotcha. Um, a lot of people don't like eating them because they let them sit in that 80 degree live well all day, and then they yeah. take them home because they die right as soon as you put them in live well. They yeah. They have to be moving and pumping that air. Right. And even that, even while they're alive, they while they're alive, they're sitting there releasing stress hormones. They're freaking out, and that that affects mm -hmm. the meat as well. See, bleeding fish is something that saltwater anglers know. But a lot of freshwater anglers do not know, do not think about it. They want to keep it on a stringer all day. Yep. So it's cool that you, that is, you know I what's look, up. I look at it as a respect thing for the fish. Yeah, totally. Or, Put it if, out if of its misery. Gonna, if you're going to take the fish's life, at least make that thing taste as good as physically possible. That's right. And it's not in there stressing and suffering. And, mm -hmm. Well, that was sweet. I still want to try to convince a couple and of these guys to hit the crank. With but. that one eating now? Yeah. Wherever he took his initial run is where we should start casting. Okay. So his initial run was forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. So we can start chucking it that way. Okay. There's more fish. Man. It's almost like I knew what they It's almost like you know what you're doing, yeah. Those are rocks there? Uh, I got or is some that rocks and a lot of fish. Oh, yeah. So we have a much higher likelihood of a hookup here. I'm just waiting oh, to nice. pass them before I tell the trolling motor to stop. They're still, wow. they're still here. It's shallow here too, huh? Five and a half? Yeah. All right, so that spot, I mean, we got the one fish on the live bait. I got a pretty solid explosion on the top water, but then after that, just nothing. We're mar we were marking tons of fish. They just weren't wanting to play. So as my girlfriend's dad always says, we just made a move to see if we could find some stupid ones. But over here, we're fishing a little deeper. It's about 14, 15 feet here. So took off the top water and going back to the deep diving crank. This is a 6XD. 
uh, 14 feet of water, yet we want this thing digging into the bottom is what Christian keeps saying. That's what really kind of elicits that strike. So uh, we pulled up here to the next spot and it's almost like Christian knows what he's doing. We showed up and there's the graph's just loaded. There's fish here for sure. We just gotta see if these guys are, are willing to feed maybe a little more aggressively. But we got some action at the first spot. I got a topwater hit. So we may go try some more topwater later on a shallow spot again, but in 14 feet of water, Christian's thinking probably not. This is not really the topwater time of year, but after seeing that fish chasing shad on the surface, I just had to throw it and I got a hit, but I messed it up. There we go, there we go. I think it might've been a fish because I was right in the same spot. Nice, fish on, on the crank. Second cast here at this spot. Now this is a much heavier setup. And I don't think it's quite as big of a fish as that first one. Much, much heavier setup. God, he whacked it so hard though. Like there was no mistaking at that time. There he is. Oh, that's another good fish, man. All over the place. Oh yeah, that's that a great like fish. A better fish. That looks like a bigger one. Not artificial, that's what I was really hoping that we wouldn't have to resort to live bait all day. Oh, he's still very green. Dude, that's a good fish. <laughs> Look at that thing, man. No way. Solid wiper. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are getting bigger and yeah, artificial. Look how fat this one is. The other one, like you said, had no mm -hmm. belly. This one, yeah, this guy's actually got some chunk. Though. He's been eating a little bit. Oh man. Oh God. Yeah. Trebles. Oh dude, that's a tank. There's what they do to tackle. Love it. Oh my God. <laughs> Straighten out the hook. Look at that. And there it is you guys. Wiper number two. First one on artificial. First one that I hooked myself. And just, I mean, look at the thickness of this fish. Oh my gosh. Such a fun fight. It, it the, the take was like, about, you jerked the rod out of my hands. Such an aggressive bite. Man, that is a good time. This is what we're out here for, and that's a good one. And uh, seems like we found some stupid ones. First one to hit the artificial this morning, if you don't count the topwater bite that I messed up. Golly, that's great. And that's keeper two, right? Mm -hmm. So that'd be my limit. Yeah. Done, done. It's, we just got out of here. Sweet, man. Oh, that's awesome. All right, keeper number two, bleeding him out. Oh, oh. Dinner sorted, ladies and gents. That's my two keepers for the day. Now, Christian can keep two as well. But really, I wanted to leave here with dinner, but really that fight is what we're out here for. That's why we're chasing these fish. They're gonna be good. We're gonna talk about it a little bit later. But right now, while they're biting, I'm gonna get back. I'm gonna make another cast. God, that was awesome. Me, uh, just no, she's, she's a really, really, really good angler. She's a way better bass fisherman than I am. Oh. Oh, dude. Dude, yeah, there it is. God, it hit it like three times. I was so confused. I'm like, now I know I'm off the bottom, so that's not what I'm feeling. Oh, he's running on the other side. Oh my gosh, it, I was like, it feels like a bite, but I don't want to get him in the trolling motor. Man, he hit it three times. Jennifer, I hope you were listening. I was over here bragging on my girlfriend and I got hit. Oh, dude, it's another, man, they're all good. Mm -hmm. They're all good fish. Oh. <laughs> Two casts later, we own them now. Christian Shuck has put us on the wipers. Golly, that was, it was, I, I was so confused. I'm like, is that, was that a bite? No, that's the bottom. It's like, man, now I know I'm off the bottom. That sure felt like a bite. Look at that, you guys. Been waiting for the wind to stop howling every day. I've been sitting here in Kansas for a week just waiting to get out with Christian and it's paying off. It's paying off. Thank you, man. You're welcome. Man, and the, the takes, the, the, that's so fun. Oh, that was awesome. So we're gonna let this girl go because I've already got my limit. Always like it, but oh, well. plenty of life left in that one. Yep, I think she's gonna be just fine. Oh. Some days it's very distinct. Yep, there we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> oh, oh, dude. 
<laughs> can you tell me I'm fun, Christian? Oh, Two casts later, every other cast right now, I'm hooking up. This is the third fish on in six casts in the same spot. Spot number two on the day. Christian said they moved the other side of the boat, so I cast over there. Oh, and sure enough, man, this one was screaming offline there in the beginning. Oh, there he goes again. And this is a much, much stiffer setup than what you're using. God, dude, they're all just like solid fish, no dinks in here. Oh, no, he didn't light the net. Dude. Come on, buddy. Oh my gosh. That's a better one. That's a better one. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my God. I'm screaming. We're about to have a hundred boats on us. <laughs> That's normal. <laughs> you guys, I was literally just talking about what a pleasant surprise Kansas is already. And it, it honestly just keeps getting better. Like the fish here are these, these are feeding fish and you could tell the difference like over there where those fish wouldn't bite anything We caught the one on live bait and it was skinny. Its uh -huh. belly was like deflated Then you come over here where they're chewing aggressively and all these fish are fat <laughs> Look at that You guys it's a feeding frenzy right now Christian has put us on the wipers Here in South Central Kansas, dude. That is so much fun What a fun fight. What a fun bite like you know it the second you hook into these things, this one just took off. Digging deep diving cranks on the bottom is getting it done. We had the one top water hit, which man, we keep doing this. I may have to go back and at least try a top water fish, but golly, that's a good time. I can't get over that. Heavy, fat, strong fish here in Kansas. Pew! I had no idea. Kansas. Yeah, it, it's not, I think it's ranked in the 40s for the best fish. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, you know, coming here, I was thinking that, that like, you know, nobody knows anything about fishing in Kansas, unless you live in Kansas. Like nobody talks about traveling to Kansas to go fishing. But this right here, man, people would travel to, to do this. This is a good time, or they should. The Christian's been saying that a lot of people around here, they hate this lake, they hate fishing this lake. It can be really, really tough, unforgiving. With the way the wind's been, with this lake being so wide open, I mean, it's been unfishable a lot this week, but Christian here's got it figured out and uh, the results are a blast, you guys. This is fun here. Man. Yeah, so these white perch, you were telling me about them. They're invasive species. And where did you say they? So the, the good story on it is <laughs> about 18, 20 years ago, somewhere in that time range, uh, they accidentally released them here when they thought they were stocking stocking striped bass. Mm. So they got their fry from a hatchery somewhere in the northeast where white perch are more prevalent. After they stocked them, a few years later, they started having these blow-ups of white perch after the spawn. Mm. Um, went maintained somewhat for years, and then after that, it basically just blew up, takes out the white bass, um, after they spawn because they run up in the Nenniscot River. Mm. Um, after they spawn, all the fry comes down after a little bit, a little bit grown. Um, now the walleye that they stock in here is fingerlings. They get eaten. Oh, wow. The only thing that really benefits from the white perch are big wiper and big walleye. Gotcha. So it, it helps grow some really big fish, but it also knocks down the overall population. The numbers. Gotcha. Is the big piece. The white perch, after they get up over that 10 inch range, when they're 10 to 14 inches, they're delicious. But nice, they, man. They eat better than a crappie, in my opinion. That usually hurts a lot of people's feelings. <laughs> yeah, you just offended some people whenever, for sure. Uh, whenever I question the, uh, the deliciousness of a crappie, but they're more firm. Yeah, Crappie okay. to me are kind of mushy. Yeah, that's interesting, man. So they accidentally stocked these white perch and they're kind of a schooling bait fish on one end of the spectrum, but at the same time, they're also predating on the young for all the the game fish species in here. Pretty unique. If we end up pulling one or two in, I would not mind keeping them. Oh, they are, and, they are uh, tasty. Giving it a try. Oh, there it is, there it is. Nice, nice. Throwing the big, the upsized crankbaits. This is a big one here. Christian said he was gonna punish himself with a little bit of a workout. Man, and it paid off. Great fish. Oh, oh. got him. There we 
go. Dude. <laughs> All right, you got any more of those crankbaits? <laughs> yep, I got another bit. That is massive, bro. Are you kidding me? Look at this, hold on, leave it right there. Oh my God. You got another one? I didn't even understand. Oh, oh, oh. No time, no time. <laughs> Look at this fish, you guys. Oh my gosh. Massive one on the huge crankbait. Uh oh, careful, yeah. Crankbait in the foot. Yeah, that's, that would not be fun. And we're on again, we're on again. We can't even, I was gonna film this guy. And I'm getting smoked now on the live bait got hit. I forgot we even had this out. We've been catching. This guy's We've been green. catching them nonstop. Dude, that is a tank, man. Oh my gosh. Oh. And this one just popped off. 27 and a half. You think that's 10 pounds? Probably close. Probably close. Maybe eight, nine. And he got a 12 pounder yesterday. So they get bigger than this. But look at this fish, you guys. Just a behemoth. Great fish. Yeah, yeah. Man. <laughs> got doubling up. I mean, that was chaotic there. There we go. <laughs> Another fish on. We've got onto a, just a pile of feeding wipers here. I'm pretty sure I got a hit on the cast before that too and just missed it. He's pulling pretty good, man. It's it's just, it's hard to tell. They're all just solid fish. Yeah, he's about the same. He's probably a little smaller than that. Anyone that's into catching largemouth bass, these smaller six pounders here fight way harder than a six pound largemouth. I just caught an eight pound largemouth a month ago and it did not fight as hard as this guy. He's nowhere near eight pounds. Man. That might be small fish of the day. And oh, still I'm just, that. that's a good time. I mean, you guys, we can't really even string a conversation together because these dang fish keep interrupting us. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh, no, -uh. and I'm dealing with this. There you go. You get it, you get it, you get it. Uh, you oh. oh, oh, yep, fish on the live bait. <laughs> just making sure I get a hook in it. No, yeah, 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 you get it, you get it. So, I mean, we're just over here ripping these fish out on, on the cranks, and then, and then all of a sudden, live bait takes off. There we go. Oh, oh, oh. Sure. Another fish on the live bait. <laughs> now, this was a bigger live bait. It doesn't necessarily, it doesn't feel like a monster. Probably about average is what we've been catching. Christian here put on one of the bigger baits in the well, trying to see if we could swing for the fences. And it didn't take long before it got hit. Golly. <laughs> Dude, these fish are awesome, man. Folks at home, you want to take your family on a fun fishing trip? You got kids that don't know how to work a bait cast or something? No problem. You can throw down a live bait for them and let them just battle these fish one after another. This is truly would be some fun for the whole family. And it's fun for me, and I do it for a living, so towards like later in the fight they <laughs> I was about to say they quit ripping off line. that's why they're so good at destroying tackle and throwing hooks <laughs> these are just like relentless fighters absolute bruisers god he said uh oh watch the trolling water there we go nice one man dude no small fish you guys Christian Shuck told all the small fish to take the day off. Solid wiper. I could do this all day. Like that is so much fun. Oh, I didn't even realize we had two out with the baits. Yeah. Yeah. Maximizing. Phew. Whew. Golly, that's a fun fight, man. Oh, oh, it's going, it's going. Yep. Oh, dude. <laughs> Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> I didn't even stop recording since the last fish. We had two live baits out and uh, back to back. It's so hard to tell, I can't, I never know if it's bigger or if it's the yeah, same. I haven't seen the boat yet. Uh-oh, he's going under the boat. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Dude, he's taking off. Yeah, that might be a good idea. If he did head that way. <laughs> this might be a better fit. I don't think he knew. It doesn't feel like a small one. This might be your big. It might be. 
Well, hopefully one of us. He, he tried to, he went straight into the boat and then out, like a, to wrap around the motor like he knew what he was you doing. You did it perfect as long as you stick that rod Yeah, as far down as I could. And he's just all over the place. <laughs> what a blast, man. My job's almost as fun as yours. <laughs> Your job's a blast. Not a bad day in the office. This fish is not giving up, dude. This has to be a pretty good one. He's just all over, back and forth. He might take you all the way around the boat. These are, these are battles, ladies and gents. Like, these fish are no pushovers. Oh, oh that's a pretty good one. That's a pretty good one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's my biggest of the day, I mm -hmm. think. That's a healthy fish. I'm pretty sure that's my biggest of the day. There's a stinger hook in there, so be careful. Okay. I don't know if that is my big fish of the day, man. It's hard to, I don't know. They're all in that same kind of range that I've been catching. Just yeah. one after another, you guys. A length on it. Yeah, this one, it's pretty long. Yeah, he's almost 25. Almost 25 inches. Yeah. Beauty, yeah, 20, that's my longest of the day. Yeah, because 25 is where Kansas calls it a master angler fish. So I'm a master angler now? It's official? Almost. Almost? About a quarter inch. About a quarter inch shy of being a master angler. Still a novice angler, you guys, but we were just hammering these things out here with Christian Shuck today. What a blast. And this girl gave me a run for my money. She tried to get me around the motor. Oh, uh, what a beautiful release too. Man, I can't quit talking about what I still haven't stopped recording. I can't quit talking about one fish. We got another one on. We own them, ladies and gents. We own them. Christian has put us on them. It's not too often that you got weather like this and you got the fish cooperating. What a, what a day. Oh, well, normally it's two, three foot waves when we're fishing. Right, like yeah, these are the best fishing is when it's miserable out. We're getting the best of both worlds today. What a treat. This is a fish that I feel like almost has like more of like a cult following. Like it's not a, like striper, right? It's just like a widely popular game fish. Coast to coast, I've caught them. People are striper, diehard anglers. Even white bass, I know guys that are diehard, uh-oh. But these hybrids, wipers, I mean, the, the local guys that know them, love them. But it's not something that's talked about like in the fishing community much. These fish get overlooked a lot. And I don't know why, because this is uh, every bit as fun as striper fishing. Right. And again, I think they fight harder for their size. A striper that long does not fight that hard. No oh, way, no. no way. So we upgraded to some bigger crankbaits. This is a 10XD from Strike King. I mean, just massive on a lot heavier setup. And we're gonna kind of swing for the fences here, see if we can't get another giant or two like Christian's last fish. But with these crankbaits, we're trying to get them down to the bottom as quickly as we can. So when I first cast it out there, I'm basically burning it a pretty good amount, trying to get it down to the bottom. And then I'm slowing way down. And then we're just trying to dig that bill into the bottom and Dunk, 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 along the mud. And that seems to be kind of what they're looking for. I don't think I've gotten a hit yet really where it wasn't on the bottom. And so if you're fishing somewhere with a lot of structure on the bottom, this would, this would be a nightmare. But here, the bottom is pretty clean. It's mostly just mud, not too many rocks and uh, no real wood out here. So you can really kind of get away with it. Ooh, that sounded like it was gonna be bad, but I had it under control. Big baits, big fish. That's a big crankbait. <laughs> Just trying to get some cotton off. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you look like you're getting hot over there, man. You're welcome. You know, if you call it a mood or what? There we go. There we go. Well, that worked. Christian said, we're gonna move over here a little bit and see if we can get on the other side of this school where maybe the fish haven't wised up to us. And we were sitting there talking about whether or not fish can wise up. And right now the evidence suggests because of, golly, this feels like a big one, but I mean, I guess they're just all so strong. Those head shakes. Yeah. And we were just talking about whether or not, you know, we're talking about how fish's memories, like do they really wise up and know that their buddies are being caught? And we were both kind of thinking that like, maybe not so much like memory, like, geez, like a human, but that they do seem to kind of wise up. And we just moved over literally just 30 feet. Another good fish. And uh, first cast, there it is. <laughs> Dude. 
God, it's another good one, man. I guess I'm, I'm just gonna quit saying that now because uh, we haven't gotten into any shorts today. Yeah, no. Uh, normally, you'll yeah, get these are all keepers. I didn't even think about that. And normally, you'll get one or two that are gonna be underneath that keeper threshold. Now we also haven't caught a 12 pounder that yeah. you've been talking about and that you got one yesterday, but uh, man, I can't get over how they just, this is the class of fish that's down there. They're all like this. Just cookie cutters. That's cookie cutter. They're, I mean, dude. With a few giants mixed in. Not too much freshwater fishing where that's just like, oh, just another run of the mill hybrid. Good six, seven pound fish, just fat. At the big tail, they're such strong fighters. Man, dude, thank you. You're welcome. For bringing me out here. Kansas, y'all. I'll be honest, I wasn't like, when I looked at all 50 states on the list, Kansas was not my number one. Oh, Lord. God, I can't wait to get to Kansas to go fishing, but I'm realizing now, <laughs> what an overlooked fishery, man. This is so sweet. I had no idea. Kansas, hidden gem, you guys. Hit up Christian, come out here and do this. It is a good time. Golly, yeah, I'm gonna get it back out there. Let's do that a few more times. Yeah, let's do that a few more times. It's not like bass fishing where you're catching a bunch of one pounders and you're like, God, this will get fun as soon as I catch a big one. It's like these are all fun and these aren't the big ones yet. So to think that like any minute now I could catch a really, a giant. Yep. Your next cast, aim toward the Sailboat Marine over there, we see all the poles coming up. Okay. Whoops. Oh, Peter White Perch. Yeah, that one? All right, guys, well, I wasn't quick enough with the camera, but here it is. Here's the fish that we've been talking about. That is a white perch. I mean, looks like it looks like it'd be related to like a white bass or... They're all in the temperate bass family. Oh, are they? Yeah, white bass and striped bass. So this is the white perch. This is this invasive species that really has provided food for these wipers to grow bigger, but at the same time has kept their numbers down because this thing is just a little voracious predator. So the white bass eggs and fry, the walleye eggs and fry, this thing is just gobbling them up by the millions. But this little guy, while a nuisance and a pest, is also really tasty. Christian here claims better than crappie. So I said, we got to, if we keep catch some, we got to keep a couple. I got to try this thing out. So it doesn't look like much, but this is going to be the appetizer before our wiper dinner. We're going to eat this guy. Hopefully catch one or two more. But if not, we're going to have a little snack. Oh, we're already getting bit. All right. And so A, we're getting rid of, that's one less invasive fish in this waterway. But two, it's going to be delicious, allegedly. We'll see. We'll see if Christian was fibbing or if these things are actually good. So we got three three rods down with little live baits. I'm sure you can hear it. The wind has picked up. It's not terrible, but we got a good steady breeze going now, which we thought might get these wiper really fired up and make the bite even better than this morning, but instead it has been a bit of a lull. I've done some like, to me, pretty incredible fishing trips. Oh, got it, got it. All right, we just came over to the last spot for the day. See if we couldn't pull out a big wiper. And I don't think this is a real big one. And back to throwing the crank baits. We got some big live baits now. We're trying to swing for the fences for a big one. And, uh, ooh. This is not a huge one, but solid fish. Like I said, the bite's been <clears throat> a lot tougher since that wind picked up, but obviously there's still a few that are willing to play. And, uh, oh, 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 take it off. Oh God, all right, see ya, buddy. It's not a white perch. <laughs> you want to get it? I don't want him. <laughs> it's on a crappie rod. You got to fight. <laughs> <laughs> Light tackle. This is the uh, eight foot crappie rod. And that is not a crappie, I don't think. <laughs> no, that's, that's definitely not a white perch either. <laughs> oh, 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 coming at me. Oh, he's coming up high in the water column. Back on the action. It's been a lull with this wind, but now we're. I was about to go say something profound about that last fish and look over this rod was rod tip was in the water. Oh, oh he's close. Found some more hungry wipers. Look at that, look at that. Oh Madness. juked you, juked. He did juke. He juked you, that wasn't your fault. 
See, and these are a little bit smaller. Yeah, but, but this last one was too. Those schools often are just cookie cutters. I mean. They're all kind of the same size, huh? Find one, and they're all going to be. I don't know if it's from the same type time period they got stocked, or if it's. Yeah, or are they just going to relate to? Mm -hmm. So back to back. If I, I could have kept the other one, we could have got the double up picture. But y'all saw it. Just getting on them. These are a little bit smaller, but still just such strong fish for their size. I cannot get over how fun these fights are, especially on that light crappie rod. Man, see ya, girl. Whew. Too fun, man. It's like when you find them, when you find, when, I mean, we've been finding them everywhere we've gone. We've marked them. But when you find the ones that are willing to eat, it's like they're willing to eat. And then it's on. I've lost count. That's usually when it's a good day. Yeah, yeah. Good problem to have. About a little haul. Limited wipers, little bonus white bass, a few little white perch. It's supposed to be sterile. If you just want the skin knocked off, half shell, what do you want? Yep. Look at that. So these fish are supposedly sterile, but he said it's not uncommon for them to have eggs. No. Yeah, the few weeks ago, we got a quick one. Are they good? Not bad at all. Dude, then I'm, all right, then I'm gonna keep it. It wasn't bad. I might be the one to try, and then the one if you like it. There you go. So those are the biggest egg sacs I've seen in my That's long giant, time. dude. A little and apprehensive. They're so veiny. <laughs> and it's not an attractive food item, bro. I don't care who you are. How's it going? Good, man. So they're not as bushy as a crappie yet, so we're gonna give it a shot. <laughs> Just the One cutest little fish. nugget. <laughs> Jumbo white perch fillets. Look at this. Looking to feed your family? You only need to catch about 200 of these to have a decent meal for six. Look at these things. And so I recently did a video where I ate the egg sacs off of a rock snapper in Panama. And I was just talking to Christian here and I was jokingly saying like, oh, I should take these home and see how they compare. And he said I should do it. He said he's tried it and they're not bad. So we're going to eat the egg sacs on this thing as well. Wiper egg sacks, white perch fillets. We are getting outside the box here in Kansas now, folks. This is gonna be quite the interesting meal. I don't even, I don't really know. I don't even know. All right, guys, well, what an incredible time. What a pleasant surprise, honestly. Kansas, you guys, I had no idea. Huge thanks to Christian for bringing me out here on Chini Reservoir. Fins and Grins Guide Service, I'm telling you, not just if you're in Kansas, anywhere in the surrounding area, it is worth traveling down here to do this. This was so fun. This would be such a blast with a family, with new anglers, doesn't matter your experience level. I do this for a living and I had an absolute blast. So coming up next, I'm gonna be cooking up some wiper, some white bass, some white perch, little nuggets, which I'm pretty excited for, and some wiper egg sacs. We're gonna see how that goes, but man, thanks so much. That was such a good time. Really, really appreciate it. No problem. It was fun for me. Hit them up, you guys. This is a good time. You really, I feel like, represented Kansas well, because again, I really did not have any high hopes for this state, and I'm ashamed of that now, but this was awesome. This was so much fun. Thanks again, man. You're welcome. Okay, guys, welcome back to Field Trips HQ, the Keystone Cougar, my home on wheels. Got back from fishing, got cleaned up, and now I'm hungry. So we're gonna cook up three different things for you guys right now. We got the white perch fillets, the invasive little mini baby fillets. We got the wiper egg sacs that we're gonna try. Jury's definitely out on that one. And then of course we got the wiper fillets. I'm gonna do them in that order. So we're gonna start with this white perch, these little baby mini fillets. Call that the appetizer. And because he kept raving about this fish and how it's as good as crappie, if not better, I want to really kind of get a feel for what this fish tastes like. So we're going to just go real simple with this. 
little salt, some pepper. I'm gonna put some avocado oil down in the pan and then we're just gonna kind of pan saute these little fillets, nothing crazy on them. It's a really good feel for the fish. All right, bad boy's going down. Super simple. Let's see what this fish is really like, what it's all about. These little guys are gonna take no time flat because they're so tiny. Really kind of adorable little fish fillets. There you have it folks, white perch, invasive species, allegedly delicious, we're about to find out. I'm gonna go ahead and try the first one. It's probably still pretty hot, but. That is every bit as good as crappie meat. Super, just mild, very, very tender, just white, flaky, delicious. Oh. Needs nothing. That salt and pepper, no fishy taste at all. Just a really, really clean, clean white meat. That's phenomenal, you guys. White perch, invasive, did the lake a favor, kept the three that we caught. Man, I'd put that up against Krabi any day of the week. And I know those are fighting words to a lot of you guys, but that's fantastic. That's so good. Ooh. Yum, okay. I'm gonna polish this off real quick, just in case our next contestant, the wiper egg sacs, aren't so delicious. You guys, white perch. If you live in Kansas, and you got these invasive critters running around, catch them, keep those. I'm done, just devour that. Man, that was good. I wanted to start off with that because I was confident it was good. These egg sacs, we fin to find out. Wait till you see this thing. It does not look appetizing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the moment I've not been waiting for. Fish wiper egg sacs. Wait, wait till y'all see this thing up close. Mm 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 mm. The old fish egg sac, just like mommy used to make. Not really, mom would never eat this or serve this to me. I can't really get over just how like veiny these things are. Not, not an adjective you're looking for when you're describing dinner. On a scale from one to gross, what are y'all putting this at, hmm? Okay, folks, ladies and gentlemen. Oof, God, it's sliding around like a... Um, next up, pretty remarkable the difference in size. That's... Two fish about the same size. One had this egg sac, or two of these, and the other had these little baby egg sacs. We took one from each fish, but pretty remarkable. And they're about the same size fish. I don't really understand the difference there. Uh, but interesting to note, these wiper cannot reproduce. So most hybrid species on planet Earth, most, not all, cannot reproduce, incapable of reproducing. So these white bass mixed with the striper, they produce wipers. Wipers themselves cannot reproduce. So for them to get into a lake, Either white bass and striper need to be hybridizing, they need to be fertilizing each other's eggs, or more commonly, they're stocked. They're made at a fish hatchery and then stocked. But even though they can't reproduce, they're still producing eggs. So kind of like a chicken, these eggs wouldn't get fertilized. And so we're gonna eat them, just like chicken eggs. If your chicken eggs look anything like that, I take them back. So my last time cooking fish eggs was in Panama, saltwater, and I got a lot of comments on that episode saying that cooking them in butter is a really good way to go. So what I'm going to do for the little guy is I'm going to cook it in butter with some salt and pepper and probably a little garlic. See how that is. Then with this big old guy, we're going to dredge him in flour and pan fry him in some oil to get a little crispy outside because it's like the thing is just like thick, you know? Like I want a little crust on the outside. The last time I ate the fish eggs, the, the texture is kind of what got me. They're gritty. It's just a little weird, but it was good. But we'll see. I also had a comment saying that from a guy that said that he prefers freshwater fish eggs over saltwater fish eggs, which I thought sounded absurd. Stuff like that, I prefer saltwater fish, but he said freshwater fish eggs are better, so 
We're gonna find out. Let's get to it, I guess. Okay, so for our little guy, we're gonna do just a tiny bit of flour. Not much, just something to kind of hold it all together. And then we're gonna do some salt, some pepper. And that's it. We're gonna get the full experience here. And then in our pan, we're gonna add some butter. And in goes our beautiful little wiper egg sack. Oh, it's shriveling up. Weird. All right, give her a little toss. All right, I think that ought to do it. Doesn't look like a whole heck of a lot. And there you have it. Little mini wiper egg sack cooked in butter. Oof. Okay guys, well it's not more than a couple bites, but there it is. Little mini wiper egg sack cooked in butter per your recommendations in the comments section. I'm just not going to think about this too much. No. You guys, I don't think so. It's hard. Mm -hmm. So it's a little hard to buy it through. I guess I think because we cooked it in butter. I think it's gonna be better doing it in flour. It's fishy tasting, but not in a horrible way. Not in the bad fishy tasting, but it is fishy tasting. Honestly, I think I liked it better in oil. But yeah. Not the worst thing I've ever had. The texture is really not that bad, except the outside is tough. It's like a sausage casing with sort of a soft inside. Eh. Not a 10 on the gross scale, but not a 1 either. Eh. It's all right. I'll be honest, now thinking about biting into this giant egg sack is sounding like less of a good idea. But we're going to do it. We're going to. Let's just. What's the worst thing that happened? Let's do it. We're gonna roll this guy in there, get make sure it's nice and evenly coated. And then I've got some vegetable oil down in the pan, and we're gonna drop this bad boy right on in there. Whew! Mm-mm. -mm. Yum. Alright, we're gonna flip this bad boy now. Woo -wee. Good looking crust on that. Now, one thing I learned from my buddy Diego in Panama when cooking egg sacks is to oof, kind of puncture it with a fork to make sure the oil gets down in there and cooks these eggs through and not just the outside gets crusted over. Goodness. Try to cook it on all sides because it's so giant. Alright, and I guess it's looking about done, although I really have no freaking clue. Oh yeah. Wiper egg sack. Mm-mm. Man, this thing looks weird. It does not look like something you would associate with fish. Alrighty, so while our egg sack is resting, we'll call it, we're gonna prep up these wiper fillets, which I know is gonna be fantastic. This thing, I don't know anything about. And to prep these fillets, basically what we're gonna be doing is removing this red part of the fillets. So on white bass and wipers both, you'll find this kind of red meat in the fillet down the middle line and a few other places. I don't exactly know what this is. It doesn't matter. I mean, we bled these fish out. It has nothing to do with that. And this red stuff is no good. We're going to cut that out of the fillets, cut them up into little fried bite-sized pieces, get that ready to go. And then we're going to try this egg sack thing. Uh -huh. Frankly, it's so big. I think I'm going to have to use a knife and fork to cut into this thing. So let's do that.
Mm. You can see it's kind of like cornmeal. I mean, it almost looks like a hush puppy right there. It's sort of the texture of this. Now, it should be nice and crispy on the outside, but the inside, yeah, let's see. Moment of truth. It looks weird. I don't know. I'm not choking because it's disgusting. <clears throat> I'm, cho I'm choking because it's a little bit dry. I think I overcooked it. Really because I was scared to undercook it. But honestly, it's all right. It's all right. The outside is nice crispy edge. The inside again is this kind of soft cornmeal type. It's kind of like a hush puppy, except not as good, <laughs> frankly. But this one's not nearly as fishy tasting as when I cooked it in butter. The outside is much softer, easier to bite through than when I cooked it in butter. So I've done it both ways now. For me, if you're going to cook fish egg sacs, which I'm not necessarily endorsing, but if you're going to, I think cooking it in oil, frying it, pan frying it in oil is the way to go to get that outside crust. I also added a lot of flour to this one. I think that's part of the reason it was also a little bit drier, but not bad. I'll tell you this, the white perch fillets, we're gone in like 20 seconds flat. This thing, probably not gonna be gone in 20 seconds flat, unless it goes into the trash. I don't know. I'll, I'm gonna take another bite, but not because I love it, mostly just for y'all's sake. It's really kind of bizarre looking on the inside. I mean, it does not look like fish eggs by any means. I don't know what it looks like. It looks like cornmeal. I keep saying that, because that's what it looks like. I've had worse things, for sure. I've also had better things. Yeah. We're going to leave that, and now we're going to cook up these wiper fillets. They're going to be much better. Much better. Now we're going to season up the fish directly with this Traeger Fin and Feather Rub. This is kind of my go-to fish seasoning. I love this stuff. Then we're going to get some flour seasoned up with salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Again, we got a simple egg wash, nothing fancy. Got some vegetable oil in the pan heating up, and we're about to dunk these bad boys. You know, I think a lot of times with fried fish, there's a million options, right? And I've done pretty much all of them. You can get like a Louisiana-style fish fry mix. You can do beer batter. You can do panko crumbs. Do all this fancy stuff. I'm going to keep it simple. I know these fish are going to be delicious. So we're going to do egg wash and just basically seasoned flour. That's it. It's going to give it a nice light coating, but still give it a good crunch on the outside. As long as you got flour on hand, which I always have flour in my pantry, you can make up a fish fry. You don't have to go buy some special batter or seasoning or breadcrumbs or anything like that. And oh yeah. This should be fantastic just the way it is. Give these first ones a flip. Done. Looking right. It smells fantastic. All right, so last step, we're gonna chop up some parsley. Last one's coming off now. Oh, wait, these smell good. And I think that it's important anytime you fry food, but especially fish, sprinkle a little green, something on top. It just makes it look a lot fancier, a lot more appealing, adds a little freshness, and bam. There you have it. Finished product, look at that. Just crispy, tender, this is gonna be so good. Without further ado, let's sneak a sneak a bite. Hmm? Cheers. Ho, ho. It's hot, but it's so good. Check that out. White, flaky, super tender, moist, delicious. Oh my gosh, that's good. Mmm. Such an underrated fish, both this and white bass and striper really, not talked about a lot from a culinary perspective. People eat them, the people that know, but it's just phenomenal. The thicker pieces, the thinner pieces, it's all really, really good. God, Liam. I mean, just clean white meat. We cut out that red meat. 
and this is just phenomenal, you guys. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful piece of fish. Mmm. 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 Well, you guys, I'm enjoying Kansas so far. What a pleasant surprise this state has been. What a hidden gem this place is for anglers. Nobody's talking about Kansas, but you should be. Get on down here, finsandgrins.com. Hit up Christian. That would be such a fun time for you, your whole family, your wife. No experience required. That was awesome. And the rewards are delicious. He'll clean your fish. He won't cook it for you. But other than that, he's a one-stop shop. Hit him up, finsandgrins.com. Thank you, guys. So from here, I'm heading north. Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota. I don't even really know what I'm getting into yet. Come along. I hope to see you next week. Should be in Nebraska by then. We'll see what we get into up there. But for now, I'm going to enjoy the rest of this fish. So good. Egg sack on the fence still. Not so sure. But hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thanks so much for watching till the end. Please like, comment, subscribe, all those things. Hope to see you next week. Thank you guys. I appreciate all the support. Love y'all. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. God, look at that. good. Look at that. Look at that. I go straight from the bank, gassing up the tank, cranking up the radio, playing old Hank. It ain't that long till I'm back at the farm. I'm pulling up the truck down at the dock. It's time to do some cruising, baby.